There was a video, a very, very racially humiliating video that no child should be going through, but yet he had to go through this. Now this child was a wrestler and he was participating in a wrestling event. Now, the, it was no issue with the competition, except you had a white supremacist referee who has been known and has been caught saying racial slurs in the past. He had an issue with this young brother's dreadlocks. And he told him that if you do not cut your dreadlocks, then I will make you lose the match. So either he cut the dreadlocks or he loses the match. Now I want you to watch the video. I want you to pay close attention to that young man. Just watch him. Don't pay attention to nothing else. We'll talk about the other things that we're looking at. Let's roll that clip. Now, you saw that young man, how he looked humiliated, how he looked just defeated, and that white woman ran to get those scissors to botch up his head. See, that wouldn't be my son, because that would be a problem, because I would tell my son, you don't let nobody in your head, period, unless it's your barber. If it's not your barber or whoever we pay for, they don't do nothing to your hair. That's first and foremost. Second of all, that match wasn't worth that. That humiliation to do this based upon race. And you know, people try to talk, come up with this colorism in our community. They know that that young man isn't white. They know that. They don't care if you light skin or darker than me, they have the same vitriol toward us. That white woman didn't come up there and say, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This isn't right. I'm not going to be a participating in this. This young man was following the rules because in the rules, it states that you can have natural hairstyles. You just have to have a legal cover for it, which he had one. So it wasn't an issue that he wasn't following the rules. It was just this white supremacist referee by the name of Alan Maloney wanted to racially humiliate a black child. And you see how the other teenager, the white guy was trying to console with this teen boy because he was being racially humiliated. How many white boys in this country had to go through that? Black folks telling them, you can't have your natural hair. Let us cut it. Or you're going to lose a match, even though you're following the rules with your hair. See, they don't go through things like this in this country. So in some black folk, because they're afraid to do anything outside of deal with issues like this. When I start saying that's why we need to go to Africa and, and, and just at least get a break, go there once a year to deprocess from that racial humiliation and racial terrorism that we deal with that is affecting our health. We are so stressed as black people every freaking day. We're stressed and stress kills you faster than anything else on top of the other things that we're dealing with, with them putting the worst foods in our communities, allowing drugs to come in, all the things that we constantly have to deal with as black people. And you didn't hear no mass protest or what happened. You didn't hear anything. It was just allowed to happen. His team and the coaches didn't have his back because if they would have had his back, they would have said, you know what? I don't care if you want them to cut your hair, we as a team refuse to allow this to happen. So no one had his back. He was alone. He was, and then they have the black kids on the team, but he was alone. And this goes back to us as parents for not teaching our children about racism and white supremacy in this nation. Our children need to understand how to spot it and stand up against it. We as parents are failing our kids in that area. 
I see so many black kids oblivious to racism and white supremacy until they have an incident that happened like this. So our kids have been so integrated that they don't understand anything until they deal with some real issues and problems because of they black in this country, which is sad that we have to deal with issues like that. Now let's talk about this white supremacist um, referee that caused all this. Now he had a history of racist incidents on March 25th. Maloney attended a work gathering for officials where he called a fellow African American referee at the N word. Why was he still allowed to keep his job? Why racial slurs in most corporations, school districts, etc., isn't tolerated, but yet he still get to keep his job. Now they said the two had appeared to have gotten into an argument over homemade wine. When the comment was made, according to the courier post, another referee, a black man named Preston Hamilton slammed Maloney over the remark. The referee claimed that he didn't remember making the remark, but that he accepted eyewitness accounts as to what occurred. Now he also stated, you know, people do make mistakes and I apologize. Maloney said, I really don't uh, think this should go any further than it is. Anyhow, the remark was made not to him after he told me what I said, it was entertaining to us breaking each other's stones. I didn't remember it. I was, told uh, that I believe you said it. And I say, yo, that ain't me. That's when I called him right away when he told me we were good. This guy is an idiot. He's an idiot. He is a white supremacist. You know, these people, let me tell you something. This is, you know, like I said, when I, when I went over to the sister Melissa McKinney's house and I seen the pain, on that sister and that family. And I got to really see the, 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 the spawn of Satan that the white supremacist is and what they do and how they cause great pain, torture, and terror everywhere they go, especially to the black American that's been here hundreds of years. They get off to, to harming our children. They love that. You have to understand they, these people, even today are descendants of those who would take a black person and torture them for hours and then end up killing them. And then they would chop up their body parts and put it in Mason jars and put it on their mantle as souvenirs. And yet we are silly enough to allow the children of those same people who still doing the same things. Maybe it's not to that extreme, but still doing the same things or supporting those silently doing the same things to black people. And we allow them to tell us that we the most violent. Remember, nobody stood up for this young brother, his team, the coaches, that white woman ran to cut his hair. She was in on it. That, that was very, very sickening. Now the young man's name is Andrew Johnson. And anytime that we see natural hairstyles, you know, Paul Mooney had talked about this long time ago in his comedy album called race. And he stated that when your hair is relaxed, white folks is relaxed. He talked about when you have natural hairstyles, they aren't relaxed around you. They, they look at that as a sign of rebellion. Uh, it, it just bothers them. They, and they don't know why they, they, they either want to touch it and put their hands in your hair and, 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 and like, like you some sort of pet in the zoo, or they, they want something to happen to it. When people talk about the weave and, and that issue always brought up about weave. Do you understand it is conforming to the white supremacist structure to put straightened hair to make them feel comfortable. They don't feel comfortable with a black woman with a big Afro. They don't feel comfortable with a black woman with locks. They don't feel comfortable uh, with black women that wear Bantu knots or any other natural style that black women wear on the job or black men. They're not comfortable with that. They see in way too many of y'all with locks and Afros and Bantu knots and you know, all kinds of different things you're doing with your hair. They, they, they don't feel comfortable. And the thing is, we should never make them feel comfortable. 
For what? They don't do nothing for us to make us feel comfortable. They don't fix their hair a certain way to make us feel comfortable. And we don't care what they do with their hair. We got our own lives. But it's what I told you. The white supremacists stalk us. They stalk us on every freaking thing. How we fix our hair, how, how we wear our clothes, where we spend our money, where we eat, who we date, who we marry, how we dress. I mean, any little thing about black people, this is how the white supremacists want to try to micromanage and have some sort of say over you. These white supremacists to this day still feel like Calvin Candy on Django Unchained. When, when he said they are my N words and I do with them whatever I want. That's how the majority of them feel. That's why they feel they can come talk to you any kind of way. This is why they feel they can come interject their opinions in black issues that has nothing to do with them. This is why they feel they can tell you something about your hair. This is why they feel they can tell you something about uh, you speaking up about issues in the community and you trying to fix those issues and interjecting themselves saying, because you talking about fixing your issues and loving yourself saying that you're anti-white. It don't even matter about who do what we have to have love for ourselves. We ain't got time to be anti anybody or hate anybody. We have to have love for each other because we have been dealing with self hate and, and the hate that's been taught to us and conditioned through uh, by the white supremacists for hundreds and hundreds of years. So when you saw that young brother in that video, he is one of many who have been humiliated in this country based upon the sick, sick, sick and demented spawn of hell nature of the white supremacists. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed except the times. This is why black folk you're going into 2019, put aside all that stupidity that you're doing. In, in life or online, especially online. Some people, they old, they 40, 35 and up, got kids, spouses and everything, and they're acting a fool on social media. When you could be using your platforms, where you can be using your talents and gifts to speak up for young brothers like this. You may not like me and that's fine. You don't have to. You may not agree with my methods, that's fine too but use your platforms to do the right thing. That's it. At the end of the day, it don't matter if you don't like this one and you don't like that one. And I, you don't, who cares at the end of the day, we dealing with real world issues and what happened to this young brother should never happen to nobody, male or female. And it's on us to why it keeps happening because we don't do anything in response to this. We don't hit them in a pocketbook. We don't call it out. We say, I'm not surprised because I'm tired of even hearing that term. I'm not surprised because I'm not surprised. You just basically swallowing it whole and then you go on with your life. And yet another young black man, a young black girl will be racially humiliated and nothing is being said. We in this day and time could ha communicate so quick and do so much more than Malcolm X have done or Martin Luther King have done due to the power of social media. In an instant, you can send a message to millions of people. In an instant, you can galvanize all black people in that town and demand that guy be fired Dem and get help that young man sue. We need lawyers in our community to become freedom fighters because we don't really have that as we have a few, but we don't have that. Every time these people pull stunts like this, lawyers in our community should be stepping up in those states and, and, and say, you know what? I'm taking this case and we suing. We are going to sue because this is not right. You have to start hitting them in the pocketbook. That's all they understand anyway. And they'll start respecting you. But if you allow somebody to step on your neck and beat you up and treat your kid like that, cut your child's hair, Oh no, a lawsuit is just a must with this situation. Ain't no way they, they would get away with that. Ain't no way. She botched that boy's head up and she was enjoying, enjoying every minute of it. If you go back and watch the video doing what this white supremacist referee stated, we have to start standing up for ourselves. Black folk. We can't just sit here and just let everybody. And I mean, everybody, not one, everybody run over us, everybody. All these people that have this vitriol toward us and we just allow it. We don't respond. 
Well, we so quick to attack each other. We'll make video after video after video about each other. We'll live stream about each other, but we don't live stream and, and make video after video about this young brother right here. What are eight hour live streams for this brother? Where that's at? Well, where's the, where's the panel discussions for this brother? How we can protect our children, how we see our children is completely targeted in public schools and that we need to create our own schools. We need to homeschool or whatever we need to do. That's the discussion we need to start having. We sit up here and talk about racism, and white supremacy, but then we send our kids to the schools every day. We got to cut out the foolishness. We got to cut out the foolishness because the way things are going, we either unify or we we not going to perish. We're going to perish here, at least here in America, because you have an all kind of people coming in this country and they come in this country with vitriol toward me and you. And we didn't do them anything. You look at the brothers and sisters in, in California right now, that government and what it has done to that state. And look how black folks are being treated. That's a whole different video for a different day. But it's time out for all that back and forth online. When you got platforms that can reach millions upon millions of people throughout the world and you can make a change through social media, you can pressure the white media to make a change in discourse and you have done it. Well, let's, let's start doing that. How about that? Instead of sitting up here screaming in, 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 in your car, making videos or other little messy and catty things that we're doing online, let's stand up for our people and do the right thing and let the world know and expose it and also take action against treatment like this, because this is utterly wrong. But leave me a comment, let me know what you think about this particular story. If that was your son, how would you respond to it? Would you just say it's one of those things, you just be mad and go on by your business like a lot of us do? Or would you actually take action, file lawsuits? Um, what would you do?